We're starting. And now our video is live. All right, so hello, everybody. Welcome to SharePoint Power Hour. Um, this is our weekly uh, SharePoint discussion. Um, this week, we are going to go over some info path and uh, task roll-ups uh, with Laura Rogers, who is currently having some technical difficulties um, with Google Hangout. So uh, we're going to uh, wait a minute for her. Um, in the meantime, I guess we could do some introductions. Uh, we have a special guest today. It's Corey. If you Hello. want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Corey. I uh, I work at Pago Palette. I'm uh, I work with Rackspace, and uh, I help them with a couple of things sometimes. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Tavis. Tavis, I work for the business solutions team on uh, for Rackspace in the SharePoint group, and I am the resident business intelligence developer. So pretty much anything dealing with SQL Server, reporting services, analysis services, uh, data warehousing, performance point, uh, power view, power pivot, all those tools that have power and or pivot in them somewhere. <laughs> seems, <laughs> seems to be a lot. Or point. There's a lot of them. Uh, and uh, I teach a few classes as well for Rackspace. I have a reporting services class, and uh, I'm actually putting together an access services class to be out sometime early next year. Cool. Is there any uh, new feature or anything like that, or anything that's uh, stuck out so far with access services? You know, uh, it's a lot different. So I never used the web databases in 2010, but I do have a... Like when I, when I first started off in consulting uh, many a year ago, uh, I my first project was like an access database. They handed me this monstrosity of an access database, and I was like, "Oh no, I don't really know access." So uh, that's kind of where I started off and moved on to to bigger and better things like you know SQL Server and stuff. But uh, during my time as a consultant, I had to go back a few times. And, and work on access databases for for different companies. Kind of uh, usually they would become in this you know turn into this state of ill repair where nobody knew how to fix it, and the person who built it had ran off to some other job, and they were st stuck with it, and it was you know mission critical, which is a, a common theme for access databases. I've noticed you build <laughs> you build them, and then all of a sudden they're like you need them uh, at a production uh, ready level, and they're just not, and then. Uh, someone leaves and nobody knows how to fix it. But anyways, I did done that a few times, so I'm really familiar with the the basic uh, desktop access database. But going into uh, SharePoint uh, access apps in SharePoint 2013 is really a, a leap. Uh, the whole design interface is just completely different. So it took me a while to kind of re-familiarize myself. I wasn't able to find a lot of the menus that uh, I was, was expecting to see, uh, so uh, it's it's been a learning experience. But uh, there's, I'm really excited about it. I've been diving pretty deep into it lately, and uh, the potential for access services I think is huge. I think it, it will probably end up taking off pretty well here in the future. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I can see just a ton of applications for it. And finally, moving some of that data out of SharePoint lists where you have some limitations, and and moving it into Access services where it really resides on a SQL Server backend and tables, and you can you know do all the cool stuff you can do in SQL Server like indexes and things like that, and then reporting off of it in a tool like Reporting Services rather than Access. So lots of cool stuff. Cool. <clears throat> um, so I'm I'm Andy Wessendorf. Uh, I'm the de facto host, I guess, because uh, Joel is unable to join us. Stephen is also unable to join us. Um, Joel is with her team in San Antonio at the Castle, um, enjoying Rackspace headquarters. Uh, so uh, me, I'm uh, I'm in the business solutions team as well. Uh, I've worked with SharePoint for three and a half years, uh, and I've worked a little bit with uh, Corey and Laura on this solution that we're about to go over. Uh, and by worked with, I mean I kind of sat there and said, "Hey, maybe we should press this button," and then if <laughs> Then they pressed a different button and then it worked. So that was my contribution to the team on this one. Uh, 
And I think Laura should be joining us, maybe, hopefully, um, as she is the one giving the presentation. Seems like pretty much every time I go to give a presentation, uh, something hap bad happens to me. Uh, last week we did the Excel services uh, integration with PowerPoint as well as project pages. And uh, for me last week, my problem was that my explorer.exe kept crashing. So uh, looks like Laura's having some similar issues. Um, in the meantime, uh, some ideas for New Year's resolutions for SharePoint. Uh, I guess mine, <laughs> mine would be better documentation. I don't know. I, th I think that's probably a good resolution. Writing things down better. That's a good resolution for uh, any type of technology. Yeah. That's always the, f always the first thing to fly out the window. And then uh, shortly after that, it's usually testing, in my experience. Who needs to test and document? <laughs> <laughs> Overrated. Yeah, I mean, if, if I built it right, then why do I need to test? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> pens, pens, or pencils are for people who make some mistakes. So, um, but yeah. Hmm. Other things to talk about. Uh, I guess uh, one big thing is um, next week. Um, Mike Glisson will be giving uh, a presentation on, I believe it is planning and design. Um, and then the next week is a holiday, so on December 25th, we won't be having a power hour. On January 1st, also a holiday, it's New Year's Day, uh, won't be having a power hour, but then we'll be back on January 8th, and I'm sure we'll think of something really cool to talk about by then. <laughs> And I think I have a uh, power hour coming up uh, sometime after that, a couple weeks after, into January. That's going to be over Report Builder and some of the stuff that you can do in there. So it'll be actually a, a very small subset of the class that I teach that we uh, will also be kicking off in January again, I think on the 15th or 16th. Uh, so if anybody is interested in reporting services training, that is yeah. out there. Maybe I should sh throw up that URL. Uh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think they missed first. the uh, the cyber deal or whatever uh, that we had going on. I think the cost of yours was during the deal it was like 150, and now it's uh, 250. Which is still, pretty good deal. And looks like Laura just joined. Hey, and your webcam's working, but it looks like you're muted. You that took forever, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we fill time pretty well. We talked about <laughs> users' resolutions and stuff. Oh, yeah. A lot oh, okay. of access services. <laughs> Let me go ahead and tweet out the link real quick. Um, okay. I, and then I can tell you about my crazy morning with my VM. Yeah. We have to tweet it with yours because yours is worth $8,500. Your Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is worth like 20 cents. <laughs> yeah, really. What do you have, like three followers? <laughs> hey, hey, add a one in front of that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, my so. Webcam works, so. Yes, that's definitely a bonus. Um, <laughs> so, um, I had, uh, I've been working on this uh, solution we're going to demonstrate in my um, VM, and I. Windows updates installed in the middle of the night and rebooted my computer with all my VMs running. And so apparently it screwed up VMware. So when I went to go start up my VMs again this morning to kind of finish fleshing out the demos and everything, it can somebody turn mute themselves? It's echoing. Um, it throws me out like I can't concentrate when I, it's always Tavis. <laughs> um, so it wouldn't fire up my VM, so I had to go just, I went ahead and just upgraded to VMware Workstation 10, so I had to do that and uninstall VMware 9 and reinstall VMware 10 when I really just needed to be working on getting the demos uh, fixed. And so I got that finally done, and then um, and so and then when I tried to go into Google Chrome, it uh, now it was telling me that the plugin wouldn't install and all this stuff, so then I had to shut down all my four virtual machines that I had running. <laughs> <laughs> so that I could reboot my computer and all this stuff. So that's where I've been. But did you uh, you guys already talk about the thing that we're going to be talking about today, the task thing? 
Uh, a little bit. I prefaced it with saying InfoPath and Task Rollup, so I don't think they can actually get anything oh, okay. from that description. So, so. <laughs> did you guys already introduce yourselves? Yes, we ran the gamut. All right, even Corey. Sort of. Yeah. And Cor Corey, you can put this fancy little. Um, if you go to Google, uh, Google Tool Hangout Toolbox on the left. If you click the little icon of the little person within a circle, it lets you do this lower third thing like we have on our like with our name and our Twitter name if you want to. That's where we got that. Before okay. you got here, Laura, I was in the middle of uh, doing a shameless plug for my reporting services class, and I said I'd share the URL to that. So here oh, okay. it is on my screen, sharepoint.rackspace.com slash ssrs-training. Shameless plug. Come hang out with me. <laughs> fun. Oh, I've got a fun thing. Uh, what did I do with it? January 16th. We, we traded gifts today uh, with the with some of our managers at work, and Randy Driscoll sent me this. It's a Wonder Woman apron. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll share that with you guys. I think I'll wear it. Anyway. Um, so our solution today, and... Uh, what, what the idea was that you need to be able to managers need to be able to go to SharePoint and see a list of all the tasks that are assigned to their subordinates. So when we were kind of thinking about how we could possibly do this, we um, we were thinking maybe the you know the we needed to do something at the task level to be able to go in in and you know do a workflow on the task or do something in the task so that it would have the manager's name because right now you know all just tasks in SharePoint don't know what the manager name is but then we decided that going and doing anything on in all the individual task lists would be you know not acceptable because then how do you how do you account for that how do you, when you have new task lists and all that kind of thing so we decided the best thing would be to use search results somehow and uh, display all the all the information um, that of, about all the tasks in a search results pane, but then the trick is that you have to figure out how to go through all those different people, iterate through all the different people that the currently logged in user manages. So um, let me go and turn on my. I'm going to show you this in 2010. You can this be done in 2010 or 2013. So let me see. That link that I put out to. Um, to Twitter seemed to be the correct one, by the way, right? Somebody said something about the link being. Yep, it works. Okay, all right, cool. You Just didn't have sure. an extra dash in it this time. <laughs> that happens sometimes. All right, let me go share my screen. Make sure I share the right one. And right now it is showing Google Chrome, which I don't want it to do. All right. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yep. All right. So um, first thing I wanted to show you is, all right, so this is the way the syntax would work right here. Just in any just search that you do, the assign to field is what we want. So if we want to assign it to multiple people, we type assign to colon and then the person's name in quotes or and then that that's how you can string them together and have multiple people. So this is what I just wanted to show you what it looks like when I typed it into just a regular search box to show you that it does show you all of the tasks that are assigned to those two people. So that's how you can just iterate through multiple people and have all the ors in between their names. So once we determine that syntax, then we just had to figure out how to get a list of all the people. So let me show you the end um, results. I just had it pulled up. There it is. All right, so on this, I just stuck it on this home page of this test site I have, but it shows me my subordinates. I'm logged in as Shane Young here. It shows me my subordinates, and when I click Retrieve All Tasks, when I hover over that, you can see that it's concatenating together all that information. And then it takes me to another page, which has got my search results, and I actually configured a search results web part to show um, to show it with actual columns. So this is search results, it's just um, customized. Now I wrote a, a blog post, uh, Google Chrome doesn't let me choose, share hyperlinks, but I wrote a blog post called Web Parts, Web Part Sites That I Have Access To, and it is um, shows you the method in SharePoint 2010 of going through and 
customizing a search results web part and that's the manner I use to go in here and add other columns and it, and it, and it talks you through going through there. The only difference between that post and this solution is that one is sites and this one is tasks but it, it's just you know it's just search results. So that's that's what the solution looks like in 2010. And let me uh, make sure I have all my 2013 stuff running. I'm going to turn that on. In 2013, the search part is the same because you still have to do your search syntax the same. And the info path part is the same. But um, the, the search results web part, the way you customize them in 2013 is completely different if you want to go that, that extra step and customize it to have columns and things. That's completely different and it requires being able to customize your dis a, a custom display template. And Mark Watts actually taught us that in one of our previous um, one of our previous power hours. He showed you how to go in and customize and create a custom um, list uh, display template in SharePoint 2013. So that's kind of the really the only difference between the two. I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna wait for this thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the form looks like. So I'm gonna go back back over to my 2010 machine and open up this form. And Corey Emmons here, we had a, um, and, and Andy and I, the three of us, just sat down and basically figured out all this stuff and figured out the formulas that we needed to do. The main thing that we needed to have um, to be able to know the manager information is you have to have that manager information not only in your user profile but pushed out to user information list. So the way we did that was in our search, uh, not in our search service application, but in our um, user profile. So by default, your user information list on all of your SharePoint sites is not going to have the manager field. So this is an extra step that you have to take on the server. So my uh, virtual machine's taking a second. You have to go to the to your user profile properties, and you have to go to that manager property and set it as replicable and when you set it as replicable that will push that field out to all of the user information lists and all of your site collections and then you actually have to run I think th do we have to run a full crawl after that Corey or did it just magically appear uh, I think we ran yeah I think we ran a full crawl yeah full crawl will make it appear so my uh, of course since I just had to turn this off and back on before, right before I came to the meeting now it's all warming up again <laughs> but um, I'll get so I'll get back to that I'll let that refresh so what we did is we created a data connection in InfoPath that goes to the user information list the user information list exists on every site right here and once we tapped into that, we went ahead. I just picked the name account, and I went ahead and just picked the picture just for fun to have a picture, the you know, list of those people's pictures. And then that manager field, that's the key there. So you have the manager field, and then when you go through this, you don't want to retrieve the entire user information list right when people load the form because that will retrieve all your hundreds of people in your company. You really just want to retrieve the people that the currently logged in user manages. So the way you do that, so when you go through the, that wizard, just don't check the box to automatically retrieve it. On form load, we're going to retrieve a specific subset of information. So we're going to set a query field. So in the user information list, the field that we're setting is the manager query field, not the manager data field. And then once we set the query field, we pick that field, then we're going to concatenate together the name of your domain with the username function of the currently logged in user and that will say like Contoso slash Laura, Contoso slash Shane, whoever the currently logged in user happens to be. It will concatenate them together which will match up with the syntax of the manager name in that manager field that's going to be domain slash username. So once you set that query field to have the manager name then you then you perform the query and that way the results that it returns is only going to be those few those hand that handful of people that the currently logged in user manages so that was kind of the easy part the hard part right was the was all the the stupid formulas right oh yeah so oh my goodness so here well, right here we have a link so this is the link that they're actually going to click on i'm, I'm going to kind of work backwards so the the hyperlink, let me go like show you the properties of the hyperlink here real quick. It the data source is this link field and then it just says retrieve all tasks. So what's in this link field is a concatenation of whatever your 
results page happens to be, where if it's just a, a page in your site pages, or if it's a web part page you created in some document library, or wherever that that list of tasks is going to show, that's where you're going to point them to. So in this case, um, like in SharePoint 2013, I just took just a regular ASPX just web part page and inserted a web part, and I inserted the search results web part, and that's the page that I'm going to point them to, whatever page I put the search results web part on. And then this K equals is going to be whatever the query happens to be. So then I'm, I'm concatenating that together with this without OR. Corey, what was without OR supposed to mean? <laughs> it was the one that took off the last OR. <laughs> okay. Because we had too many ORs. Oh, right. So if you have multiple people, you don't want it to say OR at the end, or else your yeah. search results are buggy. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we basically created the first one that concatenated everything, and it just threw an OR onto the list of the repeating table. And then we took a we just took a shortcut and said substring. We just created an entirely new field that did a substring of that whole string minus the last three characters, I believe. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so this, but okay, so I'll go to, to skip to the loop internal one first. The loop internal one. What's the difference between loop and loop internal, Corey? I think we're just trying different things. Loop internal loop is what we're so using. A, yeah. Okay, so this is the one you're doing this eval thing. I wonder if I could copy this and paste it like to the. I'll I'll have to put this. Maybe in, in Word see. and then blow that um, up a little bit. Let me. I'll put it. I can put it in the comments field in our YouTube video, so I can pull up the YouTube, um, the one that we're streaming right now, and I'm going to post it in the comments so that people can see that. And um, by the way, let's go ahead and monitor the comments and see if anybody that's watching um, makes a comment. Uh, and that way we can, or question, has a question, that way we can answer those. I'm on it. Yep. Okay, so it's making me log in. All right. Um, so I'm going to take this and copy it and put it in the chat window. Here is the loop internal field info. And you were going to blog about this too, right, Andy? Yes, I was. But okay, then people so made me do work and stuff. <laughs> work? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty long, complicated blog, I have to admit. That's why you're doing it. <laughs> um, no, but once you blog about it, I'll go ahead and link to it on my blog. Because I posted a blog post this morning just kind of quickly letting people know what we're doing. And I didn't really have time to go into any details. But um, So once you blog about it with more of this information, then that's where people will be able to get to, mm -hmm. to see the details. Yeah, because we've, we've actually somewhat skipped a couple things. Like this eval, eval, double trick. It, yeah. Well, yeah. go ahead and explain the eval, eval, double trick. So um, we have our repeating table, um, and in order to get all of the items that are inside of that, um, you 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 don't want to like set it to the value of just you know the the repeating table because it'll only return the first one. So in order to loop through it, uh, we have to do this uh, formula. And by doing an eval, it's basically going through it and it's evaluating the current item and then appending it to the pre all of the previous ones that we've returned. And then it and then by doing the dot dot, that's what sends it through all the way. Um, this one, this we found through uh, some awesome Google searching, and uh, it basically wouldn't be possible without all of you forum repliers out there. So <laughs> very true. Thank you, Internet. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that that's a pretty crucial part of this is is to use that double eval. Um, I, I think uh, it was an MSDN forum that we found that on. Okay, so it's going to and it concatenating together a sign to and a space. That's what the percent is. It no, the percent twenty two is a quote. Right. The yes. percent twenty two is the URL encoding in order to put in an actual quote there. Um, because if you don't put a quote, uh, the names have spaces in there potentially. So it it puts a percent twenty or something like that in it and it all messes it up. Um, so if we put a quote around it, then it won't um, 
it won't add that. And then um, you put it on both sides. And then the title is the actual is actually the name of the person, first and last name. Right. It's just the title field from the user information list. Yep. Right. And then we put an or in there so that way we can find all the tasks for any of the people that are subordinates. So this is this uh, repeating table is going to pull in all of our subordinates and then we say search for assigned to is equal to that person A or person B or person C, etc. And the, the D colon title, that was something, that was like, like the little, little last thing that we figured out, right? Yeah. Because um, the, the blog yep. posts we found had the big long string go into this, like all the way, like the X path, all the way from the top of the root all the way down to it. Right. But we found that if we removed all that and just made it only the field name. And it can't be, it can't be an actual like insert field or group. It ha we had to actually type it out. Right, yeah. So you go to, uh, in the... Um, the, the forum reply, uh, what it mentioned was the my colon instead of the D colon. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was different because they weren't using the user information list. Um, so here, I, I guess we would have found it if we looked inside of that data field D colon there. Um, but that was kind of like where we kind of deviated from that forum post um, in order to, to get that. But yeah, so... I just did a right click on the name field here in the user information list and did a copy X path like that and that's how you can see what the path is to <clears> that. <throat> mm -hmm. So we were since we were already inside of this list here in our in our uh, formula, all we needed to go was through this one field. So that's how we mm -hmm. did that. Oh, let me go back over here. So that was the loop internal syntax. <clears throat> Pretty cool. And then the without or takes loop internal, and what is that? Takes off the last three characters. Yeah, that gets rid of the or and the space before it. Pretty cool. All right. So there you have it. You have, we have three different formulas that we had to use. We had um, this doesn't do anything. This doesn't do anything. That was just stuff we were trying out. This doesn't do anything. We were trying a whole bunch of different stuff, but we just <laughs> yeah. used loop internal, which is the main thing that loops between everything and puts the assigned to and the person's name. And then the without or takes loop internal and takes the space or off the end of it. And then the link is just what creates the hyperlink and basically concatenates together whatever page you're going to, k equals with the without or thing. And then, um, how did I do the picture thing? I'll show you real quick how I did that. I'm just, I'm just making up questions. No one asked that. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I know you're thinking it. <laughs> so. But Laura, how did you insert a picture? <laughs> I went ahead and I, and I picked it. I picked picture, not picture button, but picture here, and it says as a link. So Andy, I think we were talking about this the other day in an email about something else, like how you do this. But as long right. as you have a hyperlink then um, in this case, it's, you don't want the description, you just want the picture itself. As long as you have a hyperlink, it's just going to show whatever picture that hyperlink points to. So then you get your lovely um, results. So I'll go ahead and minimize that, and I'll go back to, oh, this finally came up. So let me go back to the home page and show you. So there's our form. So then it just shows the person's, that, that comes from the user profile of the person, and it shows their name. And then again, it just uh, concatenates all that together and it takes you to your search results. Um, and the search result, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get too much into, uh, unless I run out of time, I'm not gonna get too much into how I customize this. I'll go ahead and show you the part in central administration though. I have to go to search service applications and go to user profile service application. user properties come on user properties I swear I clicked on that it's looping it's thinking about it alright and then we just have to go down to the manager field and hit edit And hit edit. There we go. And this one little checkbox, replicable. That is that is 
not that is not reversible by the way so if you do that you can't undo it so don't do it lightly you gotta think about it ahead of time if you do it it's gonna push out the manager field to all those user information lists on all of your site collections So that's where we got that which means you also have to have the manager field populated well in oh Active yes directory. <laughs> all that and all this the entire solution <laughs> depends on the manager field being accurate in Active Directory yes you are so correct <laughs> Uh, another thing that I had to do extra was um, for that search results thing with the due date and the assigned to, I actually had to go into my search service application because I wanted to show those as columns. Again, you could still do this solution without showing that fancy search results uh, web part. You can just do it with a regular search results web part that's not customized at all. But what I did was I went into metadata properties in here and I Assigned to, I believe, was already in here, and I had to add due date uh, to as a managed property. So the way I, I'll go show you the settings in here. The way I did that was due date is already a site column that SharePoint knows because it's part of tasks already. So when I went in here and did add mapping, I just called it due date and just made up a description here, and I did add mapping, and then um, it's already it was already in here. For, for due date. So that's how I just clicked it, selected that, and just added it to my um, this managed property. And so, therefore, add, add managed property to custom results that retrieved on each query. I checked that box. And because I added the due date here, that made it available for me to have it show results in my uh, customized search results web part. So we haven't done that part yet on your environment yet, Corey. No. But. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and flip over to my 2013 environment, and I'm going to show. I'll go ahead. I put all the pages in a just a web part, um, created a web part page, just library. In 2013, that's one of those weird, funky things when you create uh, when you go to create something new in SharePoint 2013, it doesn't give you a page as something you can create. So the only way to create just web part pages, just old school web part pages, not site pages is to create a document library and make the default template for the library be a web part page. And then once you go in here and create new, that's how you can create those pages. So this is what I did. I did perform task search. And again, this is the same form, my subordinates. Um, and then retrieve all tasks. Ben Ross is actually John Ross's son. He's in my Active Directory. And then I hadn't configured this part yet, actually. So I'm going to go in here and see see if we can get this. I got it to work yesterday, and then I started messing with the settings, and I broke it. So, <laughs> so this is the, the this is the, how you do it in 2013, and hopefully this will work correctly for my demonstration. We're not going to use the pretty new. Um, not going to use the pretty new content search web part. We're actually using a search results web part. And I'll go in here and edit it. And in my blog post, it's got all these different settings to change and things like that. And, and this web part has not, pretty much none of those same settings. Um, only a couple. I mean, most of them are pretty much different. Um, you can change this to show more in there if you want. Um, you can need show paging, whatever, stuff like that. Um, I'll go ahead and apply that. The query, I'll go do my query and make sure that works. It's just a little slow. I'm, a, I'm kind of being impatient with it. Where did it go? Search criteria, query. Maybe I clicked it too many times. There it goes. Poor VM. On this one in 2013, I hadn't run a full crawl yet, so my manager field wasn't available. So, all right, and then I have to. I can do my my little uh, test with my query text. So I can do a go over here. What was it? Um, 
assigned to, let's see. We're sent 22 something or other. Or space, or space, to Colin. We'll do Todd. You just have to do the name. I don't think you have to do the assigned to again. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. I think so. So my apparently my search altogether on my uh, VM is broken. That's why. It, it was working the other day, of course, because it's a VM. Sure. Um, but I must have done something to it when I ran a full crawl and then shut it down in the middle of it when I had to reboot right before the session. But that's why it's not showing anything in my in my results screen. But we totally believe you. Yeah. So. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway, oh wait, no, there it goes. So assigned to Laura Rogers or assigned to. Or is uppercase, mm -hmm. and oh, has to be. Oh, that's what I did. Thank you, Andy. Tips and tricks from Andy Wessendorf. Frustrations <laughs> from Andy Wessendorf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, or... Oh, you're right. It does have to have the assigned to. Yeah. Oh, it, it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoops. Tips and fails from Corey. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Trial and error works every time. So there's my search results. So, all right, so I can go back over here and I paste this here and test it. That way I can see what the results would be. And then I can um, do a refiner of tasks. So I only want to show tasks. Not many other types of lists are going to have an assigned to field, but just in case they do. You can narrow it down to only show tasks, and um, you can take this back out, click OK. Okay, so it shouldn't show any results right now, but when I do the K equals and all that stuff at the top, it should. Oops, let's see, K equals, let me just make sure and type it in first. Assign to, I'll just do one person. And I put quotes in there instead of the little percent 22s, so that might be, oh wait, no, there it goes, it worked. Mm -hmm. The so. reason we had to use the percent 22s was because there were quotes in the formula in InfoPath. Yeah, that's what yeah, it was. Yeah, when it converted it to a link is when it messed it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. It got very uh, confused. Oh, let me try the whole thing now. So let me go back to that web part page where I um, perform the task search. So let me try this to edit links. In 2013, you can just drag a link like this right into your links list and hit save. So now next time I want to perform my search, I just click over here. Retrieve all tasks. Oh, wait, see, it's, it says K equals, and it doesn't have the actual people's names in it. That's a form error then. Yeah, so that's a that's a form error. But as you can see, I did it correctly in 2010. <laughs> so um, do we? Is anybody? Do we have any questions or anything like that from the internet? Probably not. I didn't publicize this one that much this time. So we do not have any questions. Okay. Nope. Do you have any questions, Tavis? <laughs> Our audience of one. <laughs> Sorry, I had to drop off there for a little bit. Uh, none, none at the moment. Looks complex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. So um, in 2013, I'll, I'll, I can go ahead and troubleshoot this since I have a few minutes, but um, let me go back over to here. This is where I had the form pulled up where I was editing it from. Let's see if I can get four virtual machines running all it's at the same time on my 16 gig of RAM laptop. <laughs> Your laptop's going to hate you. Google Hangouts might hate me too, so we'll see what happens. Andy, does it have comments that haven't been approved? Is that what your comment is about approving comments? Uh, I was trying to approve your comment. I see it in the okay. comments, and I've been monitoring it. I just there's like no button that says like approve or anything. I just see remove. Oh, okay. So it's either keep it hidden or remove it. It seems. 
Oh, I thought that they just automatically appeared there. That's what I assumed. So let's see if I, when I pr preview it, if it works. Okay, yeah, it does it. This is weird because this might be a 2013 thing. I'm not sure, but because I was able to put this exact same form with the exact, you know, this identical form published to 2010, and this link worked fine in the browser, but then in 2013, this exact form, the link doesn't, the people are showing there, but the hyperlink doesn't actually have anything in it that's you know, anything coming from this loop internal. So to troubleshoot, usually when I want to troubleshoot something like that in um, an info path, I usually just take all the fields that I want to see and I drag them onto the form and then publish the form and I see, we do this a lot, don't we, Corey? Uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't want to see that for the link. That's not what I want to see. I want to see just see it as well, a text it, box. It should show it, yeah. There you go. And then publish that. Da, 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 da. Come on, everything's very slow. It's my poor, my poor machine. Usually, it, when I usually I hit publish, it's just like done, like just like that. All right, finally, and then I go back over here. Um, for some the reason I wasn't publishing from the same computer is because I did something to my authentication on here, like browser settings or something, and I, it won't InfoPath won't let me publish. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all right, I'll refresh this, and then it's going to have my new version of the form on here. This is the InfoPath form web part, by the way. I didn't mention that. Okay, yeah. So none of these formulas are actually showing anything in them. Mm. So let's go back and see what I did wrong. See if maybe I did something wrong, or maybe just the formulas don't work uh, at all. That would okay, be so loop internal you can say this is pointing to the right thing there. Concat assigned to with title. Um, I can make sure that the title has the same syntax. That's what I was just thinking. It's still D. Copy XPath and Notepad. Yeah, still D title. Of course, that doesn't that hasn't changed. All right, and then um, so yeah, that's just not working hmm. at all in the browser. So maybe the maybe what's supported has changed from 2010 to 2013 with whatever. Um, formulas we're using in here. That's kind of sad. Hmm. Yeah, maybe the double eval isn't working. That's a possibility. 2013 might have an, an actual solution on how to do that, as opposed to the hack together one we did. Assuming they changed anything in InfoPath 2013. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that looks like something that we'd have to delve into further to figure out why um, the form is not doing that in 2013. But um, nobody's using SharePoint 2013, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. So, yeah, we'll have to troubleshoot that, or, or maybe you just can't do it at all in 2013. But it's a very cool solution in 2010, I think. And that's what you guys have, right, Corey? 2010, yep. Yep. So far... So hopefully you aren't upgrading to 2013 soon. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> let them get. I know of. <laughs> don't let them get too hooked on the solution for you. Yeah. Yank the rug out from under them. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So what do we have coming up next week? We have um, Mike Glisson, and I and believe his topic was planning. I think it was planning for. Um, it's going to be planning for upgrades, but I think he changed it, so he changed oh, it's it. it's on navigation so, options. So, navigation options are next week. Oh, let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen in here. There we go. 
So hey, we're going to be talking about navigation options next week. That's SharePoint 2013. We are not going to have a SharePoint Power Hour on Christmas Day or New Year's Day, so then we'll be off for two weeks. And then, Tavis, you can tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing on 1-8. Uh, yeah, uh, Report Builder. So I think we're going to take a small subset of the reporting services class that I teach and kind of show that uh, during Power Hour. Report Builder 101. Awesome. Exactly. And that's uh, SQL Server Reporting Services, which is awesome and so much fun and not enough people use it, I think. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's all we had for today. Um, I never did introduce myself. I'm Laura Rogers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and um, thanks, everyone, for whoever's watching this now or watching it later. Feel free to put comments on the YouTube, and we'll, uh, we'll try to help you out. If you have any questions, we will see you all next week. Bye. All right. Toodles. Bye.